Hey everyone, it's the Skeleton Bones back with some Minecraft Infinity Evolved the Expert mode. What I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna make a containment for three villagers and I should have made it a bit larger. So this is how it's gonna be. A trading post is gonna be here. Then there's gonna be several rooms with villagers around this trading post. And why am I doing this is because we need to get a lot of emeralds and diamonds. I don't wanna go mining for diamonds because we are not gonna get diamonds as much as quick as we could get from trading with villagers. So this should be at least two blocks high so that the villagers do not suffocate. I'm gonna make it three blocks high just to be safe. So this is the gist of it. And I don't think that skeletons could fire through these walls. So these villagers should be completely safe. Um, our first villager is obviously gonna be the one that we've got in the safari net previously. Carl. That's the guy from YouTube short video. The interesting part about this is a trade station from Railcraft. So it will go here. By the way, those machines do not require power to work. What I'm gonna do now is put one pair of item ducks here and pair of item ducks here. One server will go this way and the other one will go the opposite way. That's pretty much everything that we need to start exploiting the villagers in this pack. Yeah, and the next step is going through all of these villages and trying to get the villagers that we need. I think I'm gonna go for, well, obviously the RF tools villagers. Oh yeah, and I need a blacksmith villager as well. Ah, uh, there's the one, there's the one I was looking for. Does this village even have a blacksmith? It does not. So might as well go to the next one. Oh man, finding villagers in this mod pack. It's turned out to be a task with this world generation at least. At least I'm finding all kinds of beautiful s spots here. <laughs> all kinds of beautiful spots to build base in. Oh man, seriously not a single village? I mean, I guess we got a single village, but without a blacksmith. Finally. Yeah, he's a blacksmith and he has a good trade by the way. I really need any kind of blacksmith. I don't really care if he has good trades or bad trades. It's all the same to me, I just need some diamonds. Oh, this guy. So this exploration session has brought me some insight. At least I know that the realistic world generation can spawn the Thorncraft biomes. And we got we got some iridium shots as a bonus. Looking for the villagers here, trying to exploit their trades to get some emeralds. But it turned out to be quite a journey. So all of these we did today. We actually did find a couple of villagers, but still not enough. I can't even zoom out that much. Right, so let's see about doing this. I'm gonna grab some wheat. Get the emeralds from this villager. Carl. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. We get three emeralds out of one sword squads. That is not too bad. Alright, I'm gonna turn this down. Their sounds are kinda too loud friendly creatures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a hopper and put it on top of the pulverizer and we'll get some diamonds while doing the trading with our villagers. Well this guy might not survive. All he's been doing is trying to scam me out of my shot squads and emeralds. What is this? What kind of trade is this? Seriously? Wasn't it 5 emeralds for 7 third quartz crystals? Now it only gives us 1 for 5 emeralds. Alright, finally. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some Sword Squads dust and set it like this. 16 Sword Squads dust for each. Wait, first of all, 
I'm gonna set this lower trading post so that it will buy three emeralds for each short squads dust. And this server is gonna whitelist the short squads, redstone ignored, and put it here. So and then this server is gonna whitelist emerald and put it inside of this machine. Mm, and we'll have to find out what's the trade that it has the last so that we will kind of update it each time it runs out of stock but we'll be swimming in the emeralds in no time so yeah we are already accumulating the emeralds well we are almost there but i'm gonna stop messing with the villagers right now because we do have a lot of diamonds now a couple of stacks of diamonds from this and then we got some emeralds that we need i'm gonna finish automating that setup sometimes later yeah i'm gonna leave 30 emeralds here wait did i did that guy just die inside of the smelter well that was that was a fortunate um chain of events which led us to have a bucket of resident ender inside of the smelter without us having to do any work. That's just four extra ingots of Ethereum. Since we do have some extra ender pearls, I'm gonna make one of these. So I put this down here and this down here to make it go faster. Right click a piece of glowstone on the liquid translocator and then so that we are able to control it with redstone, just right click a piece of redstone on there. And it fills up the basin almost instantly. By the way, I don't have a lot of copper here. I should probably go mine for some copper. I am uh, kind of all over the place. So, I figured that I should probably make a tinker's hammer. And go and hunt for some more copper. Because things aren't going anywhere unless we start our nuclear reactor. And without the copper, there is no heat vents. It's a lot of copper. I'm not even planning to use this hammer a lot. I'm gonna move on to the Ender Quarry soon. I still need to come up with a name to the hammer. MC Hammer would be kind of a cliche. I wanna go with the name of a gun from Borderlands. So I'm gonna name it a Flacker. But also what I need is a Silky Jewel. It requires a block of emerald and then four ingots of gold and some string. I'm not gonna mine for a lot of time. I'm gonna mine until I run out of food supply. Two hours later. So the first order of business is to put all of the copper ores that I have here into the sack mill and pretty much everything else too. That's all the ores that we have here. I'm going to put coal through here, iron, aluminum, and tin. But I'm going to keep the uranium, because the uranium goes through the macerator instead. Instead of just waiting on all of these plates to finish crafting, I might as well make up another metal former, so that the crafting goes at least two times faster. What I need to do also to speed up this process even more, I need to upgrade these machines so that they can pull out of an inventory and push to an inventory automatically. There is an upgrade for the IC2 machines in this mod. It's called respectively the pulling and ejector upgrade. I'm gonna put a couple of chests above and to the left or to the right of these machines so that they pull the materials from top or bottom or whatever the side and then output into the other inventory. So well, ejector upgrade. This one is gonna eject to the to the west side. Both of them should actually pull from top. And this one as well. Oh well, pretty much it's a waiting game now. Let's double check. What do we need here? We have these plates, we have these crafting, we have crafted these, but we also need 60 iron bars. This is still processing this stuff, is processing as well. Mm, I also need to think about making the compo 
opponent hit band. We need one of those. The villagers are doing okay. Hey Carl, is everything okay here? Since I do have some copper on me, I'm gonna make eight tanks for each of the solar distillers that I have. We are just in time. These distillers are almost filled. And the heat component goes in the middle, second from bottom row. It's not my design, I looked it up online, so do not, if anybody is gonna use it, do not attribute it to me. You can say of course that you saw this design on one of my streams, but it's not my design, it's not my idea. So just like that, and there should be 11 spots left for double uranium fuel rods. I'm gonna put a single fuel rod in the middle, but otherwise it's, it's only gonna be a first cycle that's gonna work like this, otherwise all of these spots should be occupied by the double uranium fuel rods. Dual, not double, dual rods. Let's launch this reactor and hope that it doesn't blow up. But obviously I knew I know that it doesn't blow up because I did it like a million times. So far we've been generating 42 RF per tick and this is generating 800 RF per tick. This is the whole episode for today. We achieved the IC2 reactor today. I'm not gonna say anything about that because it's not automated. It's not finished, but we do have a lot of emeralds and diamonds from that setup. But it's still manual though. It's been Skeleton Bones. Until the next episode.